For this reason, man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but the one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. So, why does Moses permit divorce? Why does the law originally permit divorce? What's Jesus literally say here? What's the phrase in the text? The hardness of your heart. Yeah, hardness of your heart. Which is kind of like saying, well, because you guys are a little bit of, you guys are kind of jerks. Human beings are jerks. Human beings are weak. Human beings make bad decisions. So God or Moses gave you an escape clause. If you get stuck in a marriage that's not good, you have that escape clause. However, is that ideal? No. It's only if you get in a bad marriage. What is ideal? Right? To stay married. So Jesus says, look, this was just like a clause, an escape clause that would allow you, because of the hardness of your heart, because you're weak human beings, ideally you should stick together forever. And it also says that in Genesis, and he quotes this line from Genesis saying, you should stay together. And he goes on to say that if you if you divorce what and remarry, what is it? Right? So if I cheat on my wife, that's adultery. If I divorce her and get remarried, that's adultery too, according to this passage in Mark. Then why would he say divorce was okay, but yet if you're going to like marry somebody else, you're committing adultery? No, Jesus doesn't say divorce is okay. Moses and the law says divorce is okay. So Jesus takes the teaching of the law, and Jesus kind of says, well, the law is a little bit too easy. You guys should follow godliness more strictly. So Moses says you can divorce the husband, you can divorce the wife, the, the divo- says it's a No divorce. Trick. Yep. Okay. However, in Matthew, Jesus doesn't say this. <laughs> but we'll get to that later on. Jesus says something different in Matthew. In Mark, Jesus says any divorce and remarriage is adultery. In Matthew, Jesus says well, I mean, there's some exceptions. But there's no exceptions made here. This is Jesus on the law. Let's look at another teaching on the law. Chapter 12. Starting with verse 28. 12-28. Are you volunteering to read, Jackie? Yeah. Okay, 12-28. One of the scribes came near and heard them speaking with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, hear O Israel, the Lord of our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are you are right, teacher, and you have truly said that he is one. And besides him there is no other. And to love him with all your heart and with all your love. To love him with all your heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbor to oneself. This is much more important than a whole burnt offering and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him anyway. Okay, there's a bunch of different stuff in the Torah about all the stuff that you're supposed to do, right? There are rules about divorce, there are rules about X, Y, and Z, there are rules about um, if you're menstruating, you have to correct for that by going and taking two doves to the temple and sacrificing them. 
Jesus says all the law, all the laws boil down to what two things? <coughs> Love God and neighbor. Now, this isn't exact. This isn't uh, exactly what the text says, but I'm gonna. Distinguish between like the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. Jesus seems to say like the spirit of the law is love God and love your neighbor. The letter of the law may permit divorce. The letter of the law may say you have to go to the temple and do all these sacrifices. But the spirit of the law, the essence, is love God and love your neighbor. And that's what's really important. Now, Jesus was not original on having said this. There's a story about, um, oh shoot, what's his name? Hillel. Have you guys ever heard of like Hillel campus centers? Like I think that there's a Hillel center that they just started here on campus. Well, the name Hillel goes back to this guy who was basically a contemporary of Jesus. And according to the story, someone asked Hillel, um, I want you to teach me the law. And Hillel says, okay, I'll teach you the law. And the guy says, yeah, but this is the trick. You have to do it. You can... I'll only let you teach me the law if you can do it while I'm standing on one foot. The idea being, I'm only going to learn it in like 60 seconds. If it takes longer than that, I'm not listening any longer. So Hillel says, okay, that's easy. Love God and love your neighbor. That's the essence of the law. So this idea that the law boils down to this essential two things was a pretty common idea in the first century or around that time. Hillel said it. Jesus is recording as having said it. But... The idea, again, is that the Pharisees, Hillel, um, Jesus, all these guys are reinterpreting the law in particular ways. It's not that he wasn't doing that, it's just that he did it in ways that conflicted in some cases with what the Pharisees were doing. We're going to see this uh, interpretation of the law stuff ramp up in Matthew. Jesus is, says a lot more about the law in Matthew. All right, I want to pause here. Do you guys have any questions about what we've covered so far about the Gospel of Mark? We've covered who Jesus is, who, what proof that we have that He is who He says He is, who recognized it, and we got into what kind of expectations He has with respect to the law. All right, well... What I want you to do is, while I'm erasing the board, I want you to ask yourselves, what does Jesus demand of his followers? Because that's our next question. What does Jesus demand of his followers? Jesus wants for his followers? For them to like, basically obey the rules, like don't, don't deceive him, like don't do anything bad. Well, I don't think he says anywhere, don't do anything bad. No, not, not that. Um, it was just like their faith in him. He doesn't really say have faith in me. That's something that's conspicuously absent. Because that's what the Catholic Church says, right? What's fundamental to be a follower of Jesus is to believe in Him. Jesus never says, believe in me, in the Gospel of Mark. He says that in another Gospel, but He never says that in the Gospel of Mark. 